Welcome to Digital Ship webinar. Today we're exploring the question, can AI enhance navigational safety and save human lives? Uh, our guest speakers are from Orca AI. I'm excited to introduce you to, to, to you, Philip Nielsen, General Manager of Europe, and Dora Raviv, CTO and co-founder of Orca AI. This webinar is produced in cooperation with Orca AI on a sponsorship basis. We invite you not only to listen, but ask many questions via the Q&A box. We'll spare about half an hour for them. And we are starting off with Carl Jeffrey, founding editor of Digital Ship, who will share some of his uh, starting observations about navigation. Okay, thank you. So we're talking today about AI and navigation. I thought perhaps a good place to start explaining it was to talk about Tesla and its autopilot, because some of you may be familiar with it. So Tesla is developing sophisticated image analysis technology. There's cameras on the car, which are continually recording video. They send that back to Tesla and Tesla's got algorithms that need to understand anything a, a car driver needs to see. So that's what the other vehicles are doing, what people are doing, all the stop signs so it can work out everything that the car driver might want to know. So. Orca is doing the same thing for ship navigators. We're talking about optical and thermal cameras, which are going to build a digital picture of what's happening around the ship. So you can see what vessels are nearby, what sort of vessels they are, what the closest point of approach is. So it can estimate if you're, your likelihood of a collision and what your risks are. So we can give CIFAR as much more information than they can get from their radar and ECDIS. Now, there's a discussion going on in both cars and ships about autonomy, which is uh, computers to replace people. Now, I suggest we leave that subject to one side because it's uh, quite a, there's like strong views and we're not talking about replacing people. We're talking about supporting them with better digital information that applies to cars as, as well as ships, of course. And uh, so some ideas so we can warn navigators about ships that are on a collision course with us. We can warn navigators if ships are going at a different speed than the AIS says they're going at. We can tell the navigators about ships they can't see because of fog. Um, they can also have some more useful analysis. So if the computer's working out that a ship has got a small closest point of approach, CPA, it's useful to know if it's a tugboat, which is not so serious, or it's a container ship, which is quite serious. And we can do a lot of data analysis after sort of historical data, much more than we can do with a data voyage data recorder. So a shipping company might want to know what's the closest near misses we've had today or where in the world is our most near misses or are our container ships rolling to a degree which risks of containers falling off. You can analyze longer periods of data. We're not replacing anything on the ship bridge. It's an additional navigation aid. And to install it, you uh, have Orca's camera system and their computer, and you take the outputs from the bridge navigation system, and you've got another screen on the bridge which will show their data. So Orca's got offices in London, Tel Aviv, and Athens. They've got a lot of investment funding, um, including from Ray Car Carriers, which operates eight vessels, and uh, got board members from Ray Shipping. So we're going to hear first from Philip Oroskov Nielsen, who's the uh, Digital Evangelist and Accelerator of New Business Expansion for EMEA for Orca. And then uh, after this, Dor Raviv, who's a CTO, is going to be around for the questions. He's an experienced ship skipper, marine navigation instructor, and an artificial intelligence algorithms engineer. So one of the few people in the world with an in-depth knowledge about both maritime and AI. So I'd like to invite Philip to give the opening talk. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, so my name is Philip Nilsson. I'm based here in uh, sunny Athens, Greece. I had the commercial activities. Um, and I'll run a quick presentation. Hopefully, you'll be able to see my screen. Can you see my screen? OK, so I'll run a small presentation. Uh, and then together with Dor, who is our co-founder and CTO, uh, he's based in Israel. We will be very happy to answer all your questions. Uh, Dor will answer all the complex and technical and AI questions. Um, except his technical background, as Carl said, he's a maritime navigational instructor, and Dor could actually uh, swim before he could walk. But let me start with the presentation. You can all see my screen. Yeah. 
So our journey started in the beginning of 2018. Our team has extensive marine background and technology experience. Today we have our um, uh, head office in Tel Aviv and we have another three global offices. Now Orca combines AI technology with machine learning to increase situational awareness. As a company, we understand how to leverage data and we believe that data is the new asset in shipping. Now, autonomous, and when we say autonomous, we don't mean unmanned, but autonomous operations will create a huge impact in the industry in terms of increasing efficiency, reducing cost, and most of all, enhancing safety. And we believe it's going to be similar to the aviation industry, where today you do have pilots in the cockpit, but 95% of the time, they're not actually navigating the plane. So today, we're not aiming to take control of a vessel, but more to facilitate the operation of a ship. At Orca, we're doing two things. We're assisting the captain and the officers on board to be more aware of the situation around them and therefore be able to take better decisions. And on a second level, provide the office with navigational transparency via a safety platform. But let us just phrase the problem. Today, you have more than 4,000 collisions and incidents taking place each year. The more interesting fact about this figure is that it has doubled in the past five years. Now, this results in a, a yearly cost of 20 to 30 billion. And mainly, there's two drivers for this. First, we have more global trade. We have more ships, bigger ships, and therefore, the water becomes congested. Second is that today, onboard ships, uh, the crew is far less experienced than it used to be in the past. Now, today, most of the accidents are happening in congested areas like Straits of Malacca, uh, English Channel, China Sea, Singapore, when vessels enter and leave ports. So the technology is not sufficient. The crew gets a very complex, a very confusing, a very noisy picture of the situation, like the one you can see on the slide, which is a picture from an experienced captain's blog post. It's a raider at night congested area near Singapore. And basically, he explains in his article that in congested areas with low visibility, harsh environment, today's tools do lead to low situational awareness. And that is why you have such a high percent of human error. So when we're talking with uh, uh, our clients and various shipping companies, these are some of the safety challenges that they're experiencing today. The low situational awareness in these congested areas, a shortage of experienced crew. Also, they have told us that there is no effective onboarding training tool for officers which is based on real case scenarios. Now, in terms of the office, there seems to be a lack of visibility regarding near misses and risk patterns. Another thing that we hear frequently is that there is no use of uh, data in a proactively manner for handling potential incidents, as well as an insufficiency of objective voyage records to be used in case of charter or insurance disputes or claims. So when we started Orca, we thought, what could we bring to the bridge that would be a game changer? What kind of technology can we build today that's going to enhance the capabilities that we already have? Well, a technology that pro provides a holistic solution, and that is exactly what we have made. So we've created this lookout unit, which you can see on your screen, which produces computer vision. It has three high definition cameras and three thermal cameras that can detect small objects early in low visibility situations. Now we take this visual feed and then we fuse, we integrate it with another nine navigational sensors that already exist on the bridge, like the radar, the IES, the Euro, and then we feed all that into a learning algorithm that has the capability to analyze all the data, helping the crew understand clearly difficult and dangerous situations, and therefore take the best possible decisions. Now, today, we have expanded ORCA to a second level. As we're collecting so much data from the visual cameras and the navigational equipment, we have also created a safety platform.
So from the vessel module that provides situational awareness in the field, we have made this office platform, which I will show you shortly, that turns all the data into insights where you can mitigate the risk and safeguard your company. Now, you, want, you might wonder how easy it is to install Orca to retrofit it on any uh, vessel. Well, it is extremely easy. And what you're seeing here is a small video I took from um, with my phone. It's based on an installation we did um, very close to, to Parias at LFCs. The whole installation took less than six hours, and that's including the famous Greek coffee breaks, because the solution we provide is a total solution. So it has the lookout unit with the cameras, the powerful AI computer, the touchscreen and tablet, and everything you need to integrate with the other systems. Now, just sharing here two examples, the three top photos, they refer to an installation we did on an NYK car carrier. And you can see here the lookout unit, which is installed on the Monkey Island. Sometimes we install higher on the Christmas tree, uh, the vessel. And here you see on the bridge, the radar, the Ectus, and the 24-inch Orca screen. Now, it's important to note that we're not aiming to replace or to compete with the radar. Orca is a navigational aid. We're adding an extra level of safety. And in fact, it is a complete uh, navigation safety platform. And here you see three pictures from another installation. Now, I briefly want to talk about the technology that we have built. Everything we have made uh, hardware or software has been built especially for the marine environment. And as you can see in the picture, we detect everything, the big vessels, the small vessels. We collect information and we train the algorithm. Now, today we can classify between ships, types of ships, if it's a container, it's a fishing vessel, it's a buoy, whatever. And this is super important because when you provide an insight to a captain, you have a very big difference if you have a bow crossing from a fishing vessel or a large container ship. Now, we have trained the algorithm in very difficult and very complex situations. And you can see here what an officer on the watch can see with his bare eyes and what the Orca thermal camera can identify. Here's another example of what a junior officer saw from the bridge and what the Orca thermal camera can identify. Now, we've trained our algorithm extensively in all kinds of situations. What you're seeing here is a night example, low visibility, um, pitch black night. And here you can see what is revealed through the thermal camera. And with a very clean UI, we are able to, to provide uh, information about the targets and also prioritize the information. Now, today on a vessel, the officer on the watch, he uses CPA with the radar in order to provide an alarm. Now, the CPA does not take into account parameters like the type of ship which is approaching, the geographical place, maybe it's a very narrow passage, the visibility outside. Now, all these three parameters, they can affect the decisions, the maneuvers that the captain can take. So what happens very often when you're in congested area um, and congested waterways that the alarm doesn't stop beeping because you have so many small fishing vessels and buoys to your radios. And what actually happens is you have alarm fatigue. So you even have cases where the, the crew can switch off the alarm, which is probably the worst thing you can do. Now, what we're doing here at Orca is we're providing a much more sophisticated alarm, not just to reduce the alarm fatigue, but to provide better insights and for the crew to understand what is actually happening around the vessel. So we have built very smart and mature alarms. Let me give you another example of an intelligent risk. Maybe there is a tugboat next to us with a very low CPA. This would not trigger an alarm, but a container with much higher CPA approaching at a very fast speed, of course, is, is a risk and will be identified. Now, when we install Orca on, this, on the vessel, this is what we install on the bridge. It's a big screen, and here it gives a 
clear picture of all the targets in front. And you can see here, it detects the vessel. It also detected the little blue buoy. And because of the configuration, this would actually trigger an alarm. Um, and it's the system which is extremely easy to use. It provides real-time notifications for the officer on the watch. And it, as I said, prioritizes and highlights important safety information, such as small targets, CPA, TCPA, and more. Now, working with our clients, we, we, we understood that the captain is not able to be 24 on by seven on the bridge. So we've actually brought the bridge closer to him. Now we equip and we provide our, our captains with a small but high quality tablet, the, like the one you can see here, which actually is displaying uh, what the main orca on the bridge. And, and he has the ability, you can see there's a red little button here to record anything. So when he's in his cabin and if he sees something, let's say an approach or anything he wants his officers to handle differently or just discuss with his crew afterwards, he can record and then at a later stage, sit down and review, review these videos with him. Now, what is happening today is we're seeing that captains use this to create their own video library recording based on real case scenarios and they use this for training. Now, this is what we're doing as Orca on the vessel. Now, all the information that we collect is stored in the vessel for at least two months. Based on your configuration, only the relevant information is uploaded to a private cloud. Now, the AI selects, we could say cherry picks, all the relevant data and according to your SMS, your safety management system. So in this dashboard that we have created, we prioritize the data and we show you only the important data, only the insights. So we bridge the gap between the ship and the shore. And let me show you how our dashboard looks like. I'll show you two examples. You can see the dashboard is divided in five sections. And if I go here to the top part, you can see there's a fleet risk score. This is the score for the three vessels below, and it's based on these 32 alarms. Now, these alarms, completely configurable by you, can be a collision risk, dangerous motion, uh, dangerous speed drop. And all these alarms it can be, uh, you can, um, see them at different intervals. So you can see them on a weekly, on a monthly, on a quarterly basis. Um, and if I close here and go down on the map, we can see where these alarms have actually occurred. Quite a lot of alarms here in the English Channel. If I move further down, some here at the Middle East and further down in the Singapore area. Now, these alarms can also be viewed by vessel. So if I go and select the vessel Tina Pine, I can actually see here in the top box that there is three collision risks. Um, if I select these and then drill down, I can see some further information, speed over ground. I can see latitude and longitude where this occurred. And I can actually play a video. Now, if I click here, this is what I see. Now, this is a video which has been recorded by the AI. This is an older version, so it doesn't have the overlay information like the other information for the other vessel, the wave height. And this triggered uh, an alarm on the bridge. The captain modified the, the, the course. Um, this is, as I said, a, a video which has been generated by the AI. Let's say I have a container, which I don't, but let's say I, I want to put I don't want to have any containers uh, rolling off the side. So I can put a threshold of, let's say, 20 degrees. Uh, and if a vessel has an extensive pitch roll, uh, like in the case we'll uh, show, share with you here, you can see this vessel is going sideways. The weather, uh, a bit harsh on, on the vessel. So depending on the configurations that you provide to the systems, and there could be different configurations for the captain and different for, for the office, you can get a very good understanding about how the vessel is navigated. So just to, to summarize, um, what we have created, is, is, 
Orca can can help you to to run a safer operation and to to monitor uh, your risk. Orca can also help you to reduce the workload and deliver very focused and effective training, which is based on, on real case scenarios. You can use ORCA to safeguard yourself in the unlikely um, event of an incident. And you can use ORCA to gain a visibility and transparency um, between the ship and the shore. Some of our uh, existing clients, they already use ORCA as a smart uh, recorder for handling possible uh, charter claims or, or dispute. So in an overview, uh, this is ORCA. I think now it's the, 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 the fun part, the Q&A. And Dor and myself, we are at your disposal for your questions. Oh, thank you very much, Philip. That's uh, fantastic. Well, there's already eight questions. Uh, just, just to the audience, you can also upvote people's questions. So if there's any questions you're particularly interested in, then uh, you can, uh, if you upvote them, they go to the top of the list and we'll see what people are most interested in. So we've already got one upvote for uh, Gordon Meadows' question. So Gordon, I think, is from uh, CBOT, which is a next generation learning service. He's saying, can you provide the evidence that suggests a crew are less experienced? I'm not sure. I didn't hear you say crew are less experienced. I don't know if he's referring to you saying that uh, the, the accidents are going up. I don't think you said that crew are getting less experienced, did you? Or, but um, he's asking where that came from anyway, if you, <laughs> if you said it. So, do, you want to, <laughs> do you want to go to that one first? You, or do you want to? Yeah, so, so I'd love to answer that. So this is a great question. Uh, evidence suggests that the officers today, the Y generation officers, uh, they are more experienced with technology, but less keen to really sit down on all the navigation equipment. There's even one evidence research that is talking about how uh, ECDISs are not even using 10% of their potential on the bridge. They are just configured uh, uh, um, for the first time and then being used. So the lack of experience officer usually leads to uh, uncertainty and on how to make uh, actions and how to navigate safely. And officers, uh, uh, senior officers or captains are getting more and more involved in helping these younger officers. So this is basically a, one way to use ORCA is these recordings and live playback on board. So you can really investigate later on on your dinner on how you should have been operating safer. Okay, so Gordon's asking, is that based on anecdotal discussion or some specific research? Do you want to... <laughs> You're on mute at the moment. Um, so, so it's based on research and also with a discussion with most of our clients. So they, or most, if not all of them state that they'd love to get more tools to help uh, uh, younger officers uh, get faster onboarding, more accurate training, promote them faster. All of these things are challenges of the industry on a global scale today. Okay, so if you see that the most controversial questions are getting the most upvotes, so this is a Roy from KISS, who's an electrical engineering student in your town of Tel Aviv. He's asking, are you planning to eventually replace the bridge officer? Um, well, you're, it's not, you're not deciding whether we have officers or not, you're providing technology, so maybe uh, this very, very contentious question, which will upset a lot of people if you <laughs> answer it in a certain way. But, uh... well, well, if I can just start in saying... Um... Like you mentioned, Carl, in the beginning, no, we're not aiming to replace people. We're aiming to empower. So what we've seen today is that the tools that we have today are not sufficient. And we are trying to provide a tool that really helps them in the difficult situations, the very complex situations where the waterways are very congested and there is very harsh weather conditions. Um, so, no, we're, we're, we aim to empower people. Dor? Yeah, I think, I think this is the proper answer. I, I think in terms of technology, it will probably take time. It's an industry challenge to eventually reduce uh, humans on board these com big commercial ships. The cargo and the ship itself are very, very valuable assets. Um, technology needs to mature. The industry needs to understand its benefits, its capabilities, its pros and cons. But the journey probably begins today with more digital tools uh, that enhance the day-to-day uh, uh, -day operations. 
the ongoing operations and probably in the future we might see some types of operations becoming more unmanned but it will take time for the let's say merchant fleet uh, probably it will take it will happen first in several projects that we can see around the globe uh, for autonomous ships uh, uh, um, probably it will start with smaller ferries uh, uh, not going uh, straight to the big tankers uh, straight away but on the other hand, we can see that these big tankers, these uh, uh, big ships, the, the, the safety is probably uh, one of the most important aspects of, the, of their operations. So they are keen to use these digital tools to enhance safety, both on the ship level and also on the fleet level. Okay, so now we've got a Sunil Srivastava. So he's asking, are you giving recommendations to the officer of the watch regarding course or speed corrections? I think that's exactly what you do, isn't it? But maybe... Uh... So, so, so for, th for the first phase, uh, we are just providing intelligent alarms. Uh, it will take time until we are confident enough in our algorithms to actually propose the correct uh, recommendation for the master who is trained, well trained, he studied in school. Uh, for years until he became a master. And uh, as you all, all, uh, as all of you know, the call regs can be a little bit vague on several situations. And we would not want to be in a place, in a position where the algorithm suggests a, a, an operation that might pose a risk to the vessel. So this kind of technology takes time. It takes a lot of validation mainly. So in terms of uh, data collection under the hood, we are performing uh, different types of data collection for exactly these purposes, but it will take time uh, for us to actually show that this technology is safe for a lot, a lot of use cases, very similar to what car companies are doing with uh, millions of miles of uh, driven simulators and edge cases. It takes time, this process, but we are definitely, this is something that we are pursuing today uh, and will take time. Uh, so I think this is the best uh, answer for this question. Okay, so Lennart Sederberg, I think he's in a marine consultant in Sweden, so it's a bit of a stinker of a question here. What would you reply if someone says, yet another system creating another set of alarms? I think the answer is this is a long-term project and we hopefully the, uh, replace the, uh, the bad alarms with the good alarms, but then maybe you have a better answer. Well, I think that... Yeah, Philip, please go. But we can't hear you very clearly. Oh, we've gone down. I'll, 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 so, so, so I'm Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all right. Is it better? Okay. Oh, that's much so, better. Oh, so, so I, I think the key thing here is to provide um, very smart and very clear alarms. And, and what I'd like to share um, here, here at the webinar is being on vessels. And, and I can I, I want to share an example of how people interact with equipment. So um, what we have created here at Orca is a very simple and very easy to use. Now, if somebody is looking at a Nectis, this is usually what happens. The, the system pulls you in. If somebody is looking at the Orca screen, this is what happens. So it actually helps you look out of the window. It helps you navigate. And I think this is one of the key th challenges in our industry today, to give very user-friendly, very intuitive tools. And that's something that we are very passionate about here at Orca, and therefore giving these smart alarms. Oh, very good. So we'll go to uh, Scott Campbell, who's uh, head of navigation with Witherbees, I think. So he's asking about the uh, collision regulations. I think that's what you mean by rule nine to ten. So I guess that's all that's all programmed into your algorithms. Is it? But you also said you're not making recommendations. You're just making alarms. Maybe you don't have to Do you want to talk about that. Yes, sure. So um, when we first de designed the system, the first thing we did is to model the call regs into, a, let's call it a digital uh, uh, approach. Um, now, since the call regs are very vague in terms of safe speed, passage, uh, the scenarios can be evolving on a split second. Um, all of these rules are taken into consideration, but the, at the end of the day, the purpose is to really uh, help uh, uh, the officers to focus on, ma on what matters. This is why we build the prioritization algorithm that takes into account call regs, 
location, visibility, congestion level, types of target, and, and, and many more variables. And at the end of the day, it produces a score between zero to one. Uh, one is the riskiest, zero is the less risky. And once you have this score, and this score is a, basically, it's not a global score, it's relevant to the current situation, to the state of the world. So once you have this score, we are able to prioritize uh, interesting events, interesting targets around the vessel, thus enhancing the safety. This is, is exactly what happens on the officer's mind. The reason he uses the radar, the reason he uses the act, this is exactly for that, to understand what will happen next, what is most important now to understand, and how the situation to predict the unfolding situation beforehand. And this is what we are focused on. So the cameras, they are just, I would call it, the infrastructure for additional information and presentation of information in a proper manner that is very easy to understand, very easy to work with. Oh, very good. So we've got a question from Jonathan Earthy, who's the Principal Human Factors Specialist with Lloyd Register. We've got two of the from questions from Jonathan Earthy at the top of the list. So he's asking the legal status of recommendations. So could you get sued if there was an incident as a result of anything this system gave? And also, who owns the data in the system? Are you maintaining ownership of the data? So good, uh, <laughs> good meeting questions from Jonathan there. I don't know which of you would like to tackle those. Maybe Daw, is it? Shall I start with the ownership of the data and, and then, uh, Dor, you can say about the liability. Um, so there's joint ownership of the data. We need to have access to the data in order to uh, train our algorithm. We do that anonymous, in, anonymously um, and in an aggregated form. Uh, we do not disclose the data. Uh, but we use it for, for training purposes for the algorithm. The data belongs to, to the client. Oh, so the... Regarding the liability part, um, it's an aid for navigation, this tool. So currently all liability is on the captain. Uh, as mentioned before, we are not providing any recommendations today. Uh, we only provide smart and intelligent alarms. It's for the master's consideration on how to use it, just to use any other equipment for navigation on board. Uh, the captain is the godmaster. He is in charge of the safe uh, navigation of the vessel. And this approach will probably uh, continue specifically in our own industry, the shipping industry. Uh, we are not tapping into regulations now with the system in terms of IMO. The IMO is very clear. There is one uh, person who is liable for the safe navigation of the ship, either the officer, either the captain. We are bringing them more tools to enhance safety. And hopefully in the future, IMO will understand the revolution of data, the revolution of digital tools. Uh, and uh, together with them, we'll be able to show how this technology can actually provide safe navigation, even maybe one day without uh, human intervention in the future. Wow, so I guess the captains really need to understand these algorithms if they're going to make decisions which they're liable for based on what the algorithm is saying. But maybe that's fairly straightforward, just like with a car driver, you don't get confused by the car driver saying there's something behind you or something like that, is that? I think that uh, ships are quite different from cars. Uh, cars we all drive. Ships are uh, uh, being uh, navigated by professional uh, people, uh, experienced people, and it will probably be the same. Uh, we just bring this tool for these people who are uh, 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 in the same language that they understand that they can use these kind of tools. And this is why this is not a big concern on our side. And we can see that uh, from an evidence of how captains use the system and it really helps them navigate safer in congested and in low visibility conditions. Okay, so Edison Triguero is a sales service manager navigation in Hong Kong with a Express Marine Electronics, I think. So he's asking about, did, I, didn't, I didn't hear you mention nine specific sensors you have to interface, but maybe maybe you did. Um, I guess it's things like GPS and... Yeah, so so um, j just before I, I mentioned the nine navigational sensors we connect to, just um, a few words about the, the captain and the crew. So when we actually show them uh, and when we do the, the training, which is... Um, say live training or onboard them to the system. They, they love it. They like it. Uh, the training is, we do it through, let's say, uh, teams. Um, we usually schedule 
half an hour, in 10 minutes, they, they got the, the grips of the system because it's extremely easy to use and it's very clear to understand. Uh, and that's why you know, the, the feedback we're receiving from officers and captain is, is incredible. Now, the nine sensors we're connecting to, it's the IEs, uh, the GPS, the Euro, the Compass, uh, the wind sensor, the echo sounder, rate uh, of turn indicator, the radar X, and the S-band, if that was nine. Oh, well, that's great. Um, we've got a, a question, um, a Manuel, which is a uh, fifth down. I'll just have some questions from shipping people. I've been looking up people on LinkedIn as you ask questions, but Manuel is a Marine officer with Celebrity Cruises, so he's asking, which data are you using to calculate the closest point of approach? Is that radar or a combination of sources? So I think you maybe asked that question before you showed the cameras, but do you want to go for that one? So um, since CPA, since basically radar is the approved uh, collision avoidance tool on the bridge, uh, even though ECDIS is sometimes used for that, but it's not the proper approach. Uh, in ORCA, since we integrate with multiple sensors, and we also, by the way, generate CPA, TCPA through the cameras themselves, uh, we uh, combine all of this information and hopefully try to pr produce the most accurate CPA, TCPA uh, available for us. We have our own algorithms to do that. Uh, it took us uh, several years to build these uh, fusion algorithms, but they are now working. And uh, the big problems regarding CPA and TCPA is what happens if the radar says there is a target, the camera says there is not a target, or the AIS says there is a target, but the radar says there is no a target. So basically, there are a lot of combinations here that should be taken into account. The idea is that the system eventually, uh, over time, gains confidence on the CPA, gains confidence on the type of target, the relative speeds, everything is taken into account. And only upon a given confidence or high enough confidence, just like us humans do. So first look, we might think one thing, second look, we got a better look. Uh, uh, doing this iteratively eventually generates a very accurate uh, uh, description of uh, the environment of the, of the ship. So this is how we do it. Okay, so the top of the list now, Doug Holden has three separate questions. Um, is there data going into the cloud? Do you think this could be a link to simulator training and can it identify between different fishing vessels? Well, this is three totally different questions there. Uh, can we go back to Philip now? So all the information, yes, it's uploaded to, to the cloud. Um, and because you can record uh, the videos, the captain has the ability to record anything he, he, he thinks is proper, uh, but also all the alarms, they are automatically recorded. Yes, it's a great tool uh, to use for training, and we're seeing um, all our clients uh, using it as a, a very effective and focused training uh, material. Now, today, as we mentioned, we can distinguish and we can... Uh, classify different objects um, in a very accurate um, uh, way. And this leads to, to provide this very good situational awareness. There was a third part as well. Oh, can it identify between different fishing vessels? I don't know if you'd need uh, to do that, but uh, maybe- Door, <laughs> what about fishing vessels? <laughs> Um, so, so currently the system just classifies a fishing vessel from other fishing vessels, but taking into consideration the uh, fishing vessel speed, the location, uh, more uh, parameters from the environment, we can actually infer whether or not, uh, what is the type of operation the fishing vessel is doing. Uh, this is something that is currently under development. And this is, by the way, uh, we got this feedback from multiple uh, ships, specifically uh, in the China Sea. Uh, and we just got uh, several ships now sailing over there and our system actually uh, triggers alerts in real time uh, against these fishing vessels, hopefully helping captains uh, even now navigate safer in these congested waters. Okay, so if you do two questions down, so Paul Hulstad is a S S HSE QV manager from OSM. So he's asking about night vision. I think the question is, is the screen, it's probably for door this one, is the is a screen gonna, how is the screen gonna handle people's night vision if it's gonna, people looking at a screen, they can't look it out the window. I think that's what the question is about here. Do you want to? Um... So, so uh, logically the system has night mode and day mode. So very similar to what you have on radars. So in, in night mode, everything goes uh, very, very uh, uh, low on brightness and, and the color palette changes. So uh, hopefully it helps you 
gain, better, get, gain uh, the same visibility as you should have in, uh, in, at night. Um, and, and by the way, regarding night usage, we can really, we are logging and monitoring the system remotely so we can see that how uh, crews across the globe change, or everyone changes between day cameras and night cameras, uh, thermal cameras uh, between day and night. This is really, really interesting to see. They actually change every night to the thermal cameras. Okay, very good. So I can see the next um, five questions or so, very technical questions. So Jeffrey Acousta is asking about the maximum range and angle. Mm -hmm. Dougal Goodman, we, we talked about the nine parameters, is asking about the sampling rate. Is there a camera behind the ship? Igo Prosenko is asking about the measuring the wave height. And uh, Ricardo Tromba is talking about the uh, is the tablet available for remote use, which I think maybe we'll, we'll cover all of those. Is that they're quite technical questions? They for you, or do you think? Should I say about the the detection range? Yes. Uh, maybe I can answer yes. that first. Um, well, the detection of different targets depends on numerous parameters. Uh, first of all, is the height of installation. The higher we can install the lookout unit, uh, the further we can see. But, but just to give you an indication, let's say on a tanker, which is if we install on a monkey island, which is about 35 meters from, from sea level, I'd say we could detect a medium vessel from eight to 10 nautical miles uh, and a buoy uh, two to three nautical miles. If we go on a container, um, uh, which is higher, it's about 55 meters, um, we could detect a medium vessel from 10 to 14 nautical miles and then a buoy from three to four nautical miles. Of course, always this depends on the weather, the temperature, uh, humidity has an impact as well. Um, regarding the field of view, so today we have a field of view, which is uh, 120. We're already working with uh, 225 for coal uh, reg. Um, and uh, depending on the use case, so, I think you, you, you asked if there was cameras from behind. So it depends really on the use case. So we know that if you have piracy situations where pirates, they usually come from behind uh, early morning on skiffs, which cannot be detected by the radar, um, there would be a use case for 360. And whatever we're doing now, we will be launching that at the end of the year. Everything we are providing today is uh, compatible with a uh, wider field of view. Um, I, was... I can I can add to uh, to what Philip just mentioned regarding the use case for stern uh, visibility. So um, uh, it all comes back to uh, if a client comes and he says, "I want to see to the back." Uh, for us, it's uh, no problem. Uh, there is no further extra development required. So the system is already designed. Uh, for the maritime industry is trained on these uh, type of targets. So it will probably detect it and alert it uh, if required. Uh, and, and we can also add uh, entire features around that. Uh, another thing that Philip did not mention, but happens today is we are already deploying 360 solution on a project in Japan. Uh, the first fully autonomous ship, uh, merchant ship in Japan is uh, being deployed as we speak today. And uh, Orca is uh, the uh, eyes of that autonomous ship. So it's going to be a really interesting period of time to see what happens next in the industry and uh, also in Asia and how this technology is being used. Wow. And I want to talk about, uh, just to finish this off, a uh, wave height and recording functionality. Uh, so I think uh, there was a question about wave height, right? Um, so currently the system does not detect wave height, but we can use uh, inertial measurement units to detect wave heights. Uh, and eventually at the end of the day, if as a human, you are able to detect wave height by your own eyes, we will be able to do that by the camera. This is the whole big premise, big generalization capabilities of uh, computer vision deep learning. And uh, if this is a use case, it will be able to, we will be able to solve it. There was another question, I think, regarding a tablet. So uh, when ships do uh, ask for us to uh, uh, provide a tablet, we do that. And then the tablet is using the wireless onboard uh, 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 network, if the ship has one, and then you can basically take the Oracle system with you to the mess, to the dining room, to whatever you need. 
Uh, so, so we can see, by the way, captains are putting it in their own uh, chambers uh, to see exactly what the vessel sees outside. Okay, so one, one subject we haven't covered, so Christian is Ryberg is asking about your customer base, how many systems are installed today, and there's another question quite far down, Hiro Yoshida, we learned NYK's PCC, I don't know if that's a car carrier, was fitted with your system, do you have experience with supplying for domestic ships in Japan where there's a lot of congested water? I don't know how much is secret in the answer to that. but uh... So I'll answer the first part about the how many systems and then door can, can take the Japanese part. Uh, so today we have more than uh, 50 installations um, and we have a very healthy pipeline. And we've installed uh, on gas carriers, tankers, uh, container vessels, all kinds of, of ship. Uh, this figure is going to increase uh, significantly to, uh, by the end of the year. Uh, and in Japan, door we are. Yeah, so in Japan, we are uh, installed on a cargo ship, on a domestic cargo ship that goes from Kobe to uh, uh, to uh, um, Yokohama, back and forth, and, and we we use this system uh, to analyze heavily congested areas. We can see a lot of fishing vessels around that. Uh, uh, great, uh, let's call it weather conditions, mainly storms, is a very interesting uh, location in the world to go uh, to see what uh, uh, other ships uh, are actually seeing. Well, there's a lot of technical questions, but I found one commercial one about 10 down from Matthias Vignon. What is your policy? Do you rent your tool for a test or do you have to buy it? Do you want to, that's something you haven't covered yet, isn't it? I'll take that. So it, uh, it's a solution that we sell. It's uh, our, the model we work uh, is a lease. So there's, it's an annual subscription. And we provide everything from, from the hardware and the software. Um, I, I also see there's some uh, other questions here about um, the, um, the frame per second. Maybe... Um, how many frames per second? Maybe that's something for door. Yeah, I was going to say there's about five. Not a lot of technical questions now. So maybe we can, uh, yeah. so the frames per second, a list of objects. I'm not sure we've got time for that. But uh, um, do you integrate with other navigation systems? Um, what's the integration with other other uh, other terminals? Um, sun, yeah, should we take some of these technical questions all at once? Do you think maybe for door? Um, yeah, Google so last one is asking about ice infested waters. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we, we saw some ice infested waters. It's really interesting. And the thermal cameras are, are providing great, uh, great visibility on that, by the way, uh, because ice is very cold. Um, other than that, regarding a uh, frame per second. So uh, as Philip mentioned, uh, the solution is two part. One part is a real, real time system on board the ship where everything happens in real time. Uh, for example, information, uh, that is too old is not relevant anymore. Everything is, uh, is now and the frame rate is pretty high. Uh, on the other hand, there is the data collection part where it's split into different use cases. Some of them are for research and development, for training the algorithms. Some of them are for understanding entire incidents or entire events. Uh, they are being analyzed with higher frame rate. And some of them are actually shared with the client through the dashboard. So they are more, for example, compressed, um, very fine-tuned on what is really interesting for the shore side to see. Just an example. The shore side is not interested in seeing a seven minute long video of a ship sailing at 12 knots. They are keen to see 30 seconds, what happened, what led to the event, what is the aftermath, uh, who's, who's to blame, what's going on. They wanna gain more visibility, basically. So this is why we, are, we, we develop an entire pipeline to present all of the relevant information per incident, just, just like Philip showed on the, on the dashboard. So there are different applications for the data collection. Wow, so uh, you want to talk about the, the integration with other navigation systems. So this question from Sunil is asking, is it just a thermal and a day camera picture in, in addition to what is already available in Ectis? So I think maybe that missed the point about the, well, there's quite an early question about the, um, it's, it's now analy analyzing the video is what's important about this, isn't it? And, uh, Emmanuel is asking about, uh, can, you, can you merge the system with, with other systems? Scott Campbell is asking, um, oh, maybe we'll, we'll look up this to website. Do you want to have a go at those, those questions first of all? And then uh, 
Rolf Westfall Larson at the top is asking, is this class approved? I guess you would have mentioned that by now if you, you had. <laughs> uh, I can take that and then Dora, you can take the other ones. So um, all our equipment is marine uh, approved and certified. We're in the process of collaborating uh, with DNVGL. Uh, so it's just a matter of time. Yeah, and uh, regarding the integration with other systems. So uh, just as you mentioned, um, Yes, the, for starters, we bring the cameras, we bring the computer vision, the algorithms to work on the cameras themselves. And this is part one. Uh, if we're looking on, uh, let's call it the umbrella of information or where you gain information from, radar and AIS are just not enough in, in, most, con in most congested areas, in port operations. This is why we bring the camera, the sensor, and this capability to detect. But the other big part of the system is the fusion, is the merging of different sensors, the alerting, the prioritization, and the real-time analysis or the insights. So this is a major part. So we started with the computer vision. We moved on to uh, emphasize more on the insights for the officer to understand what is important and why, and, uh, and also connecting the ship to the cloud to present to the shore side uh, uh, what's happening on board. And of course, we're integrating with all uh, major OEMs in the market. And in the Japan um, Autonomous Ship Project, we also de develop our own proprietary ORCA-AI, uh, NMEA-approved sentence to actually export information from the cameras, from the vision sensors to standard equipment on the same, uh, let's call it ethernet protocols as other equipment works on. So uh, it's a vice versa integration. Um, in the future, we could also integrate with other existing uh, navigation uh, uh, equipment on board like EGDIS and present uh, what the uh, cameras saw on other sensors. So it, it's all very well integrated. Well, there's a lot of questions about specifics about the technology. I'll just pick a couple of questions that aren't about that. It's a question from Manuel about cybersecurity. Um, now, as I understand it, you're not sending any, there's no integration with the shore and the shipboard sensors. So you should be, uh, there's no way you can use it to hack into shipboard systems. And there's an interesting question right at the bottom of the list about LIDAR. Is that something you, you've thought about including from Fritjof Eidson? Should we do those two? Do they? Go ahead. Yeah, so regarding cybersecurity, uh, we are actually following the most strict cybersecurity security policies for either IoT or digital solutions. We work with secure VPN, a virtual private network between ship and cloud. Our cloud is secure with a VPC, virtual private cloud. And the system on board is only using a, a RX and not TX, so it cannot transmit anything back to any sensor. It's basically reading sensors such a, a, as well as the ECDIS or VDR or any other sensor on board. So this is how we design the entire uh, system. The computer itself is not accessible to people from the outside. Uh, it's on a like you call it a kiosk mode, so you don't have access to the operation system. And, and the operation system itself is secured by a, by a username password, so you can't access the system at all. And this is how we, we mitigate cybersecurity risks. Wow. So LiDAR, the question at the bottom from Fridjof, is that something you've thought about? Uh, so that's the laser cameras that autonomous cars sometimes use, isn't it? Is that a Yes, That's a camera you don't have on your. <laughs> so, so for the type of operations and ships that we are uh, installed on, unfortunately, lidar technology is not yet uh, there. Uh, the ranges in which lidar is effective is uh, roughly around one kilometer, which is just not uh, not enough for big ships with uh, low maneuverability capabilities, and it also requires a hefty, uh, let's call it, power consumption. Uh, because it needs to transmit lasers to far away distances and calculate the distance. LIDAR could be more beneficial for uh, uh, close operations, shore operations, probably dynamic positioning in, uh, in congested areas, in, in, in ports, uh, uh, entering ports, and, and, and um, uh, uh, probably uh, berthing. This could be more beneficial for LIDARs if you need very, very high accuracy. The cameras are very good for classification and identification of targets around the vessel in broad field of view uh, up to the horizon line. So basically, each solution is quite different in, on the problem that it solves. Okay, so if we take five of these uh, technical questions all at one go, so Petros is asking, can you get a real-time alert to the office based on what the system says? 
I think the answer is yes, Scott. Yes, Scott Campbell is asking, is there any integration to Egdis? I think we've probably covered that. I think oh, Scott Campbell's also asking about comparison with Oscar, which is a, I Googled that link. It looks like a competitive product. So I think I'm going to ask you to answer that question. Um, so Chris Jones is asking how we're calculating the closest point of approach. Are you using the radar AIS data or are we using the video? I think the answer is video, but I'll leave that to you. And then a Subhashishyaf Basak is asking, how many years of data you've collected? Do you want to maybe take some of those? Or, or let, let me take the first one about uh, real-time alerts. Um, and yes, we can provide that, not only on the dashboard, but you can configure the, the system to get notifications either by, by SMS or, or email. And like we said before, there can be different configurations uh, for the office and different for the captain. And of course, we have different configuration for congested and, and open sea. Uh, I think the next one was uh, ECTIS. Um, Thor, do you want to elaborate yes. on that? So currently we do not integrate with the ECTIS, but uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Orca now supports uh, outputting uh, the visual identification in the standard NMEA sentences. So if uh, an ECTIS company would love to integrate with us, it's uh, more than possible. Uh, we just read sensors uh, as the ECTIS does. Uh, we synchronize everything in our system uh, to make sure that everything works properly. Uh, what other questions did we have? So how do you calculate the closest point of approach? Are you using that on radar AIS data or are you basing that on the image analysis? So, so as mentioned before, we use our own proprietary fusion algorithms that fuse data from different uh, multiple data sources to provide the most accurate uh, uh, CPA uh, possible. Uh, and we also solve the, solve the problem of what happens if one sensor says uh, A and second sensor says B and how to do it uh, by uh, using confidence over time. Uh, uh, and once the confidence is high enough, then we are providing the CPA. Um, the big difference here from the radar is that radars excel in providing CPA in distance, but radar are basically uh, unaware of the environment. So they, are, they don't know if it's night or outside, the, the visibility conditions, so if we are in a port, not in a port. So all of this is taken into consideration while we provide the CPA. So uh, this is, I think, the most complete answer. Okay, yeah, we've got um, six questions. I think there are either enormous questions or stuff we've already covered. Um, so Subhash is just asking about years of data you've got in your system. And uh, Rolf Westfall Larson is asking about training the system. I I'm not sure. It's not like AI that uses machine learning, as I understand. It's AI that, well, it's well, physics based AI, I think, with formulas, but maybe I'm not sure we can answer. We can, we can go on a few more extra minutes, but uh, <laughs> then uh, Ch yeah. Charles Hedgecock. Oh, do you want to? Sorry. So regarding the years of data collected, so if we take uh, at least one ship and we have, we have been uh, out there since 2018, so we are talking about roughly, I think, uh, 40, 50 years of data collection, okay. well, something like that. Uh, by the way, global. So from most, uh, I think most, if not all major ports in the world and also on a global scale. So uh, even from canals in, in, the, in the United States uh, uh, where we've installed one of our uh, early systems. Um, and regarding uh, uh, what was the next question? Well, false negatives. So yeah, I guess you're sending all the data back to the office to train it, is that what you're doing? Yeah, so we, we collect the data, we aggregate it on board. We have our own patent uh, pending algorithm for prioritization of data for deep learning applications at sea. Uh, we use this kind of algorithm to prioritize what is interesting for the AI. And then we upload everything to the cloud, we train, and then we redeploy our trained algorithms to the entire fleet. So it's kind of a collective learning approach where every ship is a node in a network, uploads its own, uh, what I've seen in you. Uh, previously, we had false alarm. It has the collective knowledge of all other ships. And this kind of a, a process feed itself. So this is the whole idea of uh, the data collection. Okay, so we've got four, four questions here. I think we've covered most of these. So Charles is asking about the shore-based management gets some or all of the alarms in real time. I think you said that they can. Um, Simon is asking if you uh, can share the data on the ECTIS screen. I think you said you're not integrating with ECTIS. And then we've got two very different questions. Sunil is asking about servicing of thermal cameras. Maybe that's a bit out of the scope. And Simon Gaskin is asking about the time base. I'm not sure if that's a bit out of scope, but maybe um, the last couple of minutes, do you want to 
<laughs> anything else you'd like to say about those or anything else? Um, regarding time base uh, i assume we are talking about uh, like uh, the clock or something let's so we use uh, the time base is utc which is global for for everyone so everything in the system is uh, is uh, calibrated to utc coordinates and um, uh, let me check out some of the more questions. For the uh, service requirement, as it's a, it's a lease solution, we're responsible, uh, should there be any malfunction of any equipment, we would replace that. We already have um, technicians in various ports all over the world. So in the unlikely event that there is a hardware failure, uh, that's on us, we replace that immediately. Uh, I'll tackle the false alarms. So what we did here in Orca, we built probably the largest benchmark of uh, scenarios and use cases in the marine world. It's based on, on hundreds of thousands of use cases and images and different visibility conditions and types of vessels. It's all, it, all of it is either human labeled or a machine labeled, which means that, for example, we use the AIS to label uh, the camera detection and, uh, and feed that into the system. Uh, so we use both uh, sensor labeling, human labeling to create a ground truth benchmark. And then we test our false alarm, uh, false positive, true negative rates. And uh, I can say that uh, everything is production grade. So we are way past the, the phase where uh, the system is not reliable in terms of uh, cameras detection uh, and tracking and uh, classification. Uh, today's production ready, it's deployed worldwide and it's working. This is really, really, really great. Oh, that's great. I, I can see the participants' numbers going down a bit. Maybe we'll close the questions, but if you'd like to uh, answer these ones, Simon Gaston's question, who's asking me about synchronizing the camera's time with other sensors, which is probably a very long and complicated question. And Fritzhoff is asking about the detection range of thermal cameras. I think you, I can't remember if you answered that one. I think you've answered the one about the ectis and the uh, alarm. So I don't know if uh, Dor, you'd like to give any quick comment on those two. Yeah, so uh, regarding uh, uh, the camera's uh, time, so everything in the in Orca system is synchronized, which means we have to upsample ship sensor data for the camera rates. And we do that with a, a prediction algorithms uh, on a milliseconds. Uh, this is part one. The other part regarding thermal cameras uh, 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 performance, it really depends on, again, visibility conditions and ambient temperatures, etc. But uh, we, saw, we saw large ships from 12 nautical miles on a clear day uh, with the thermal cameras. And we can see that the, the biggest, I would call it, the biggest benefit of it is not the detection range, it's just the ability to open the eyes at night for the crew in real time. So they just switch to thermal cameras in real time in the system, and now they can enter the port and they don't have all this uh, light spillage from the port. Uh, so they can just really see uh, um, the, uh, the other ships that are surrounding them and also gain the insights. So the system detects on the thermal images uh, other ships. So basically uh, the range is not as good as uh, day cameras, high resolution cameras, uh, but it really, it, it's a whole different uh, problem to solve. Uh, uh, so as you understood, the system is more focused on first integration with existing sensors. So any way you have AIS and radar data within the system. Uh, and the second part is uh, the observation unit or seeing all these small targets in the surrounding uh, vicinity of the vessel. Wow, well, that was fantastic. I think that was a marathon Q&A session. I think 41 answered questions. I think all might, might be a digital ship record. It was definitely the first or the second and a totally new subject we haven't got into before and an enormous interest. So uh, thank you very much. I'll pass back to Vida to close things off. Cheers. You've heard Philip Nielsen and Dora Raviv explaining the capabilities of Orca AI Navigation 8. We'll make the recording available for you on YouTube to review again as it's packed with information. Tomorrow we are discussing what you need to know setting up a fleet remote control center. Sign up if you haven't already. Digital Ship is signing off until tomorrow morning. Goodbye. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye.